Hello and welcome everyone to another video here on the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the most recent Call of Duty Warzone Pacific update which includes the brand new rollout of the driver or the kernel level anti-cheat for Call of Duty Warzone as well as various bug fixes and I will be telling you about a few things that were broken as well. With that being said, don't forget to like the video if you guys enjoyed, and subscribe for more content here on the channel, like loadouts for Warzone and Vanguard, as well as regular updates when the game is updated. Anyways, with that being said, let's just get right into it. Alrighty, so first of all, we have Ricochet Anti-Cheat. The patch notes say, stay tuned for an update from Team Ricochet later today, December the 15th. There's no absolute confirmation from Raven that the driver is running and it is up for the game, but I have reason to believe and I actually have some proof that me and my friends actually got of the actual driver running on the computer. If you guys go into command prompt and you run a driver query, you will actually get the driver that was not there before listed as a kernel level driver. So if you look down here, these are the drivers for your computer or the computer that we got it off of. This is my friend's computer. And this is the driver for Ricochet, Activision Brian Hill. Now the reason why we think this is the anti-cheat driver is because A, it was not a driver before this update, and B, it says kernel right here. So it is a kernel level access driver manual, which means that it's turned on manually when you open and close Warzone. And at the end here, it also says that it is included in the Battle.net client in the program data folder. Basically, the information we have so far is that this is the driver that runs and we did test it. This driver does open and close with Call of Duty Warzone. So as they have promised before, the anti-cheat does not run when Warzone is not running. So it's not super invasive like they have over at Riot Games with uh, their anti-cheat. So hopefully this will work well in tandem with the server-side anti-cheat that they have implemented into the game. So for console people, basically, this is just a more kind of, uh, it's a bigger step to getting more people banned from the game. It's basically going to be scanning people's computers and scanning their processes to see if they're messing around with the memory of the game or any of the protocols that the game's doing, and uh, then it'll ban them. This is kind of just an extra step in uh, ensuring fair gameplay. So hopefully this is going to be regularly updated, and hopefully this is just good news for the community entirely. I'm really excited to see what the Ricochet team has to say today specifically. Hopefully they'll give us some figures on how many people were banned pretty much as soon as they rolled it out and how well these server side things work. As far as I'm aware, the server side might work like VACnet where it kind of monitors how people are playing the game and it kind of dictates if they're cheating or not or flags them based on that. And working with the client side or the kernel level anti-cheat, hopefully that'll just make it that much harder to cheat in Warzone and hopefully get rid of the people who make a million and one accounts and just cheat all day because they have nothing better to do in life. Anyways, with that being said, we're going to move on to some of the bug fixes. They fixed collision issues with various elements across Caldera, allowing players to exploit, peek, and shoot through them. There was one inside of the airport area in one of the buildings that people were glitching into that building. It was driving me crazy. So hopefully that one is patched. I'll go into the game and check it out probably in the morning. Fixed an issue allowing players to duplicate weapons. Did not run into that one, but a good thing they figured that one out. Fixed an issue allowing players to infill prematurely. Haven't ran into that one either. Fix an issue causing players to experience frame rate drops if responding with a player title and calling card frame equipped. So hopefully that, uh, I don't know if that's for consoles as well, but uh, I'd assume so. This one I think was PC specific, but they fixed an issue with the voice chat output device reverting back to default communication device. Basically on PC, most people couldn't hear other people in game chat when this update launched. Fix an issue preventing Vanguard seasonal challenges from appearing or not tracking properly. This kind of happens at the beginning of every COD. It's to be expected at this point. Hopefully this actually fixes it because most of the time they try to fix it 10 or 20 times and it doesn't really work. Fix an issue where the EM2 recoil from Black Ops Cold War was not properly increased. Fix an issue causing the CAR-98 Scout 10.0 telescopic optic to incorrectly increase aim down sight speeds. Which is interesting because I just played the game and it was still aiming down sights really, really fast. So I don't think that was fixed. Obviously, I don't know. I was just using it. 
fix an issue causing players to unintentionally ADS in and ADS out. Haven't ran into that. It's kind of weird. And let's see what they did. The Type 100 from Black Ops Cold War... Uh... What? Wait one sec. This was a weapon from Vanguard. I don't know why they said that. 8mm Nambu 20 round detachment name has been updated to the 8mm Nambu 30 round mags. Alright, so there's going to be a bit of a skip here, but I had to look up the Assault Rifle Hotel and Light Machine Gun Charlie for this part of the patch notes. Assault Rifle Hotel is the automaton, which has a recoil increase, obviously them responding to the newest meta inside of Warzone, which is pretty much spray and pray with the automaton, so there was a recoil increase. And the Bren had a neck damage multiplier decrease to 1.4, down from 1.5. I guess maybe the Bren was just doing a little bit too much to the head, according to the developers. The attachment adjustments also for the Automaton. The 6.5mm Sakura 75 round drums decrease your movement speed by an additional 2%, and also decrease your move speed while aiming down sights by an additional 3%. And the 8mm 50 round mags, the Clousers, move speed is increased by 2% and your ADS move speed is also increased by 2%. So I'm assuming they're trying to get people off of these 75 round drums onto the 50 round drums, which are harder to control but do a little more damage because these things beam. But we'll have to see how crazy that recoil adjustment actually was. With that being said... Uh, some of the stuff that was not mentioned in the patch notes, you no longer redeploy with your perks when you are bought back. Before in Vanguard Royale, when you were bought back, you would redeploy with your perks. That is no longer a thing. You also drop from the Gulag now with a pistol instead of the loadout, which honestly, in my opinion, I like this change. I think it was better to just have the loadouts from the Gulag in Iron Trials because you could actually react because of the TTK. Loadouts, unfortunately, have been unchanged. You still have to wait for the event, so they haven't really commented or done anything about the loadouts yet. And the last thing is that the Car 98 k with the 20-round magazine is actually semi-auto now, which is kind of crazy, so try it out. It's super bug. The Car 98 with that 20-round mag, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's kind of stupid. It's bugged, and uh, it's not too crazy, but it's definitely worth trying to use. You don't have to pull back the bolt. It's just pew, pew, pew. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, with that being said, guys, don't forget to like the video subscribe if you guys haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.